vida fantasía a este cauce transparente como un barco en la corriente yo también quiero dejar mi estela de poesía yo quiero ser navegante por el cielo austral yo quiero ser navegante por el cielo austral sin salir de mi remanso a la sombra de ese barco a la sombra de ese barco It was announced in December 2006, Plan Ceibal was conceived as an inclusion program. It is based in three principles, equality, learning and technology. By pushing and through social inclusion and real equal opportunities, we believe we can impact in the learning, the education and the infrastructure of Uruguay. Plan Seiba is like a startup, and in all startups we have to take risks. The biggest risk we could not take was not to do anything, because by not doing anything we sacrifice every year one generation of children and youngsters. And the only way we think that we can guarantee equality and social inclusion is by active policies from the state. This was a very ambitious program. And we have to be very innovative. One of our innovations was to separate policy making from management. We, we formed a steering committee where all the relevant people were involved in the policy making. And we, we assigned the management of the operation of the project to a separate and specialized institution. Now you will ask, what is so innovative? to have management separated from policy making. Trust me, in my country, in Uruguay at least, and in some other countries in Latin America, we have the worst scenario possible where a lot of politicians like to do management and a lot of managements want to be involved in politics. And believe me, this is really bad. The other thing very innovative we did was not to request to the education authorities that they would take this project. It is the authorities are not prepared for such, a, for such a large deployment and a such a complex problem. And at the end of the day, it would have costed us two or three times more because that of lack of knowledge. You've seen the pictures. Life was not easy. We had a lot of problems. One of the most important problems we have was the fear of the teachers that the students will know more than they. And that's a fact of life. Children know more than the teachers. We have a mixed audience here, but I want the young people to raise their hands or if they have helped their parents in their computer problems. Please do so. Did your parents lose the authority because you helped them? No. The same thing happens in class. The teachers don't lose the authority because the, the students learn faster and much, no much more. By some reason that someone else should explain, the only transaction between children and adults that has no cost is when the children help their parents with computers. For anything else that we ask our children, they always charge us for something. Let me tell you, we've deployed since the beginning, that was end of 2007 until today, 450,000 computers. That covers all public education from first grade of primary school to third grade of secondary school, or ninth grade, nine grades in total. We've installed servers and connectivity in over 2,500 schools and high schools. 99% of the students, children and youngsters, 
have internet in their education facilities. 40% don't have to walk more than 300 meters from where they live to get our free network Seibal signal. And now we are changing all the schools from ADSL to fiber optics to get better bandwidth and much more applications. Our network is in public places, hospitals, social clubs, large housing complex, even in the very, very poor shanty towns. We've trained 26,000 teachers. At this moment, 6,000 teachers are using a, a four-year course. And we have a portal for those teachers, as well as a TV channel to share the best experiences. You may say, how much did it cost? The total cost of ownership for four years has been $400 per student. That makes $100 per student per year and includes the computer, the servers, the connectivity, the logistics, the field service, the spare parts, the call center, all the things that are involved. This is less than 5% of the primary and ed secondary education budget of the country and in euro terms it's 6 euro per month per child. We need to understand that any project like this needs to be measured. The first and most important result we have is it can be done. We had some impacts that we predicted, some were never predicted by us. Obviously, we had direct and indirect impacts. But basically, we have at least 450,000 impacts. I won't tell, list them all to you, and I'm not so arrogant to tell you that I know them all. But if we have to summarize it, I would say it was worthwhile. It was worthwhile because children go to school much more motivated. They miss less classes and they watch much less television, particularly in the very poor areas. It was worthwhile because with this tool we've increased the self-esteem of many, many children because they have now more capacity and capabilities to do things never being thought for them like filming, like taking pictures, like playing music or composing music. It was worthwhile because we decided that we needed the school to be the center of activity of every town and of every neighborhood, and this we accomplished. And because we are in a process by which the teachers are transforming themselves from Wikipedia teachers into motivators, orientators, coaches, that can even program in languages like Scratch or Netoys to build new activities for their class. It was worthwhile because 68% of the population of Uruguay today have a computer, but in the lowest 10%, the poorest 10% of the country, that figure is 71%. And last but not least, it was worthwhile because we transformed the privilege of having a laptop and internet in 2006 into a right. And once you transform a privilege into a right, the whole society goes behind the project and all the political, social and cultural people work to empower the project and to deliver better solutions for the country. But let me say something. Seibal is not a laptop program and it's not an ICT program. In the world we live today, the majority of the technology and education programs have been vendor-oriented and not user-oriented. And I want to be a little bit rude. When I mean vendor, I mean software and hardware vendors are the ones that are placing the agenda on what to do. If not, explain to me, I'll tell you about my country, but in a, probably everywhere in the world it was similar. Why did we need computer labs with youngsters being taught how to use a spreadsheet and how to use a word processing. Instead of making them understand logic or learn programming, we are teaching them how to make a presentation. It's crazy. I laugh a little bit because I, I should cry. Think if we would have a computer lab today, the equivalent would be how to teach children to tweet or to send text message. It's pointless. We've decided to transform all the computer labs of high school into digital 
media and digital technology and robotics labs. We're going to teach them how to program robotics, filming, video, editing, other things. Our responsibility is to think from the user point of view. And when you think the, from the user point of view and you think of the children, we give them a tool that can access information, that can, they can learn the information, they can investigate and they can work. The problem is that we have to put the right questions to the children because once you put the right questions, they normally get the answers and they can look for it. For the teachers, the responsibility is totally different. We need to make life simple for the teachers. Technology makes, has to make life easy, smooth, natural. The problem is that we want teachers to do things without giving them tools for that. So we've decided, apart from giving laptops to all the teachers, and apart from giving training to the teachers, and I know, and trust me, whatever training you do is never enough. It's like the bandwidth. You always need more bandwidth and you always need more training. But we've decided to orientate into different platforms for the teachers to make life easier to the teachers. So we are building a content platform to manage contents and two specialized platforms. One for le learning, reading and learning comprehension and one for mathematics. That in an adaptive way. That means students work at different levels, even the same class, and the teacher is reported how they are doing. Let's be clear. Once you have everybody with a computer, life is simple. The challenges are different. We are now working on an online evaluation system. That means all the students take the test at the same time. The teachers can analyze the results immediately, discuss that with their students, and at the same time compare their results against the results of all the country per region, per social area, per age, etc. We are doing that for science, mathematics and comprehension. Last year 90,000 children took that test. This year four grades, that was two grades. This year four grades will take the test. But next year we're going to do the test in an adaptive mode. Adaptive means that the, the knowledge is going to be regulated according to the knowledge of the children. And that will give the teacher the real uh, perspective of where every student stands in knowing. It's not an answer right or wrong. The, 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 the difficulty increases the more you answer or decreases the less you answer. So that you can have a real perspective of what every student is doing. For us, you may say, I'm over-optimistic. Trust me. I know that we just did the first part. And that first part was the implementation of technology in the schools and in the homes. Now is the second part, the most complicated one, which means to personalize education. We have to use technology in a clever way because every child is different. And it's impossible to think the world of today if we do not address that every child is different. And we have to work, and we're working, in different ways to address that specification. We are working on intelligent books, we are working in adaptive exercises, and in personalized homework. We have the technology, we have the equipment, so the only thing we need is minds, teachers, and get there. Seibal is one project that's not the solution and not the silver bullet to, any of the pro to all the problems of Uruguay. But it's, part, but it's part of the solution. Why? Because we've paid, paved the way to use technology to do changes. And the changes go at different speed. The, the social changes are faster to see and easier to see. The cultural changes take longer and the educational changes take much longer. But only by working on these three changes, we are confident that we can change Uruguay. Now, let me share with you a video so that words, my words are very bad, but the images are much better. Hola, soy Gaby y te quiero mostrar todo lo que puedo hacer con mi computadora Teibalita. Mira cómo yo puedo buscar los libros que yo quiera y leerlos. 
Antes, cuando en nuestra juventud teníamos que ir a la biblioteca, hoy eh, tienen este, el acceso a la información en las manos y al alcance de ellos. Con la computadora se puede acceder a todo tipo de información, visitar museos, bibliotecas, Wikipedia, es una ventana al mundo. ¡Para, no sabes! También estoy aprendiendo a programar. La tenés ahí, tenés que hacerla mirar para allá. Para que mire para allá, ¿cuánto eh, tendrás que darle? Bueno, ponele... 120. No, LED 120. Macro, mire. Perfecto. Y hasta se puede manejar robot con mi cebalita. Y acá mi papá y todos con la cebalita hasta pueden saber qué pasa y en dónde están sus vacas. ¿Y sabes qué? Ahora todos los niños pueden leer y usar la computadora. Un niño ciego que puede tener su máquina y poder entrar en internet, buscar información, este, entrar en una página y leer de lo mismo que leen todos los demás, ya es extraordinario. Es una silla este, digamos, que se controla enteramente a través de la XO, o sea que le permite este, no solo poder este, acceder a las opciones de conectividad, escritura, matemáticas, sino que también le permite movilizarse en forma independiente. ¿Ves? Con mi cebalita todos podemos aprender y nosotros también podemos enseñarle a los grandes. A través de ellos este, uno va aprendiendo, ¿no? Aprendiendo de ellos. Que yo enseño, enseño algunos recursos y ellos los usan de tal manera, este, cambiándolo, este, que bueno, que yo no lo he experimentado, no lo sé, listo, aprendo con eso, ¿verdad? Eh, muchas veces nosotros corremos atrás de ellos, es su mundo. Yo, lo tengo que admitir totalmente. Es más, eh, eso está bueno, eh, parte del docente que vos... Plantaste la semilla y bueno, te superó, eso está bueno. Y lo que más me gusta es que como la compu es mía, siempre la tengo conmigo. Puedo sacar fotos de lo que quiera, hago filmaciones, puedo crear porque dibujo y además en el canal Cibal puedo ver las clases que nos enseñan a manejar las compus. No solo a mí, a todos los niños del Uruguay. Ahora con el plan Cibal y la información y el acceso a aprender se niveló. O sea, tenemos igualdad de oportunidades para avanzar. Nos hace sentir orgullosos de ser un único país, que los niños tienen acceso de todas las clases sociales a esta herramienta, bueno, que, que data de que la importancia y el interés que hay en que la educación sea cada vez mejor. Sin salir de mi remanso a la sombra del